am going live on two different things. Uh, so I am trying to, uh, I will be looking up and down, I guess. Uh, so I'm so excited. <laughs> Guys, I took a sabbatical from work. Uh, I quit my job. <laughs> oh, God, I have so much going on. I have so much to tell you. I'm like exploding with energy right now. Uh, so anyway, hi to anybody who joins. Uh, welcome to your healing cycle. Welcome. Welcome to this healing energy. Um, I have been going through a whole lot. Um, and I want to start sharing with you guys what I've been going through, um, what's happening in my life personally. And my hope is that as I share with you my stories and what I've been going through, um, that it will bring you a sense of hope um, and some healing. I have recently come to this um, kind of conclusion that uh, <laughs> I think some of you have realized that, you know, I haven't been being myself, right? Um, and I think a lot of our suffering uh, and our pain and our our heartache comes from not being who we are. Uh, again, for those of you joining, sorry, I'm looking up and down. I'm streaming on two devices. So uh, a lot of our pain stems from not being who we truly are and being afraid of being honest with ourselves. Um, about who we truly are, right? And it also stems from lying to ourselves about what we think, what we feel, and and also lying to others. And this can show up in in all areas in your life, right? Your job, your relationships, your family, um, you know, just in your personal inside, right? Your head. Um, and what I found is that over the past five years of going through extremely traumatic events, I mean, when I tell you my stories, you're going to be like, how the hell did you get through this? Like, how are you surviving right now? <laughs> uh, is that um, it's all of these trials and tribulations are about coming home to who we are authentically, like our soul, right? And all of this craziness really just allows us to sit with ourselves, right? And be honest about how we are feeling with ourselves, right? Because a lot of us don't actually ever let anybody else in, right? We say we do, right? I was in a 12-year relationship in a marriage, and I thought I knew that person, and I thought I knew me. Uh, and it turns out that I never really opened up, right? The to the depth of my soul, right? And and was really honest with the person I was with. And that person was definitely not honest with me, <laughs> for fucking sure. But um, what I realized is that it, it it tore me apart that I couldn't be myself with somebody whom I truly loved and cared about. And I think that a lot of us. Um, are afraid to be ourselves. We are. We genuinely are afraid that people won't like us for us, our flaws, the way that we are, how we think, the, the, hey, Melissa, our deepest, darkest parts of our soul, right? What we think, what we do behind closed doors, how we think behind closed doors. We're afraid that people won't accept us or that they'll leave us or that th they'll think we're weird or there's something wrong with us, right? But the truth is there's, there's nothing wrong with you. There's nothing wrong with you. You are a beautiful soul, a beautiful soul meant to do beautiful things. And there are people out there just like me that will love you and all of your corks and your weirdness and your flaws and they will unconditionally love you for who you are when you let them in when you let them in but you have to decide that you're ready to know yourself before you can allow anybody else in you know do you know who you are i didn't and i sure as hell am still figuring out who i am um but I, I genuinely didn't know who I was as a person. And, you know, my postpartum depression and anxiety definitely showed that to me. Um, my toxic relationship showed that to me. Um, and my mother, who is now suffering with stage four cancer, has now shown that to me. 
Um, and as I go through those stories with you, I will express to you uh, the pain that I felt and that I have come to this realization that more of you need to find yourself, right? And my job, my business helping moms was awesome. Um, it's possible I won't go back to it. Um, it's possible I will. Um, but I have this calling right now that is just flowing out of my chest. I can't contain it. I'm sure you guys can like feel the energy radiating off me here. <laughs> Um, is that I need to just be here with you guys right now in this space. Who's ever watching, just know that the energy I give off is extremely healing. It is just something I have. I, I don't know what it is. I don't know how I do this. I, it just is how I've been since I was a child. Um, and I know what you need. Um, and you, whoever's watching, is calling to me to be like, hey, Danielle, <laughs> help me heal. I need your healing energy. So just know every time I come on here, whatever you get out of it, it's an exchange of our energies. It is an even exchange that you are in the right place at the right time to, to feel this healing from spirit, source, God, whatever you believe in. And, and really for me to be me with you guys, right? That I do have this amazing gift that I've been denying my entire life. <laughs> <laughs> and that it's my turn to share it with you, to share it with all of you. And a lot of you have reached out separately and I can't thank you nearly enough. And I can't thank my best guy friend, John, in the whole world nearly enough uh, for all of you constantly reminding me that what I say does matter and it does touch other people and it does help them accept their situations and it does help them to feel like life shouldn't be that hard, right? And to find the light and to find the hope. And so all of you who have ever reached out to me about any video or any post that I have ever made, I am truly, truly grateful because you all have led me to this space and time where I am speaking directly to your souls. And I'm able to say that that's what I'm doing. And that's what I do. I have some sort of gift that allows me to speak directly to your soul. I don't know what it is. And hopefully maybe this show will allow me to figure that out. Um, so, but anyway, thank you so much. So I wanted to let you know that I will be doing a live show like this. Okay. I'm taking a sabbatical from work. Um, I may find a job. Um, I may go back to my old job. I really have no idea what I'm going to do. Um, but I'm going to try and be here. Um, I'm, the space will probably move to YouTube and Twitch, um, and an actual radio station at some point. Um, for every day at 10 o'clock. Um, this is what I'm going to commit to myself um, to just show up for whoever's here, whether it's one person, no people, um, or 150 or whatever. But I'm going to show up every day during the week um, at 10 o'clock. And if I have time on the weekends, I will show up. Um, but this is going to be just a space where I can share what I do behind closed doors with my clients, how I help them heal, how I help myself heal, my family, my friends, um, just from being me. <laughs> I know that sounds a little arrogant or like confusing, but that's what I do. I can't explain it um, and advise you uh, spiritually of, of what your soul is calling you to do, right? What what you you need to hear, right? And a lot of you are going through very, very, I can feel it, very, very heavy situations. I want you to know that all of this is is changing right now and it's rapidly changing, especially if you're listening to one of these videos. Um, and this is timeless. So if you don't hear this for a year from now, just know that everything is rapidly changing and you can feel it in your body. You can feel this uh, sense that magic is coming. That's the only way you can, you can put it. You're in this like deep, dark hole, this deep, dark um, depression, anxiety, or you're worried about an event happening or something not going well, or something that um, is on the horizon that you're not sure if that's going to work out. What I've learned is that it's all about trusting the universe and 100% surrendering. Um, and, uh, and it's, letting go of controlling everything in your life, right? Suffering comes from this sense of control, the sense of fear, the sense of despair, or things are never going to work out for you, or it, everything is going to be terrible, right? And, and when we learn to just say, hey, like, 
Let's stop forcing things to happen, right? Let's stop forcing the outcome of something um, and just allow the universe to set it up for you the way that it's intended to do. Yeah, 100%. But it takes time, guys, to really allow yourself to to surrender to that right because as humans we feel like we need to control life right we we need to control ourselves control our emotions control other people right make sure that all the pieces line up properly the truth is we have no control no control and it's funny because i was what i was watching the show and i'll tell you about all the shows i watch because it will help you um but that we are really um trying to go against the natural order of things and it, it's it's funny because that sounds silly but we are like the universe sets up things for us specifically um and it's really like the truth is everything really does happen for a reason and it will keep happening to you in pretty much the same exact ways until you get it until you finally understand that the universe does things for you, to help you, to show you the sides of you that you don't want to look at, to force you to sit with yourself and be like, shit, like I suck at some of these things, right? Or I got a lot of healing to do. Um, or I've been very guarded or I, you know, aren't, aren't myself, right? I'm lying to myself. I'm lying to other people. Um, I'm not who I am. And, and the universe sets it up this way and it will give you a traumatic event after traumatic events, after more traumatic events, more, more things, right? <laughs> to cause you to, uh, sit, to sit with yourself and be honest about what you want in life who you want in life, who do you want to be around, what is important, right? And and it's interesting because 2020 really set you up for this specific moment that you are actually listening to this video. Um, it sets you up so much um, that you can actually feel what I'm saying right now. It took you to your knees. Whatever happened to you in 2020, like granted the pandemic, right? But there were multiple things and traumatic events that happened to you that not a lot of people know and you left to yourself and you still keep them to yourself, which you should share to somebody. But it rocked you. It rocked you to the point where you can't, you couldn't do something. You, you were like, shit, my life has just fucking ended. <laughs> my life has ended. It's never going to get better. It's always going to suck. It's always going to feel really bad. And uh, what I'm saying might scare you a little, but that is the truth. You're, you're, there were so many things that happened to you. And despite all of those things, you still have hope. You still have hope. And part of what I do is, is help you remember that there's always hope. There's always a uh, well, they talk about Pandora, right? When uh, I forget who gave her the box, somebody can tell me. Um, and she opens and she released all these negative things into the world, right? And at the bottom of this jar or box or whatever is hope. And so some of you, you, re you really feel in this hope right now. <laughs> You're really feeling it. And that's amazing because you went through all of this and your whole life, and you're probably going through a, a time right now where you're reminiscing about the good and the bad of your entire life, right? This, um, and this is really what 2021 I think is going to be about for most of you as it is for me, is that all the good and all the bad made you who you are and who you are is this wonderful, loving soul that just wants to share yourself with others. And that is wonderful. And and it it really showed you that even through all of this, there's still hope, there's still magic, there's still love, there's still joy. Some of you are, are seeing more and more wonderful things keep popping up. So even through the bad, you, you're learning to find the lessons, right? The lessons in, in life. 
that through the bad comes these wonderful experiences, comes this this chance for renewal. So sometimes you in tarot, it's the, there's a tower card and it's called the tower. And it's it's basically like your entire foundation has been rocked, right? Like everything you thought you knew about life, yourself, your relationships just got rocked, right? And you're fucking... <laughs> You got ground zero. You're like, shit, what the hell just happened to me? Everything I thought I knew is a lie or it's 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 not right or it's not really what I wanted, right? Some of you are going to be, you're going to have lot, you had lots of success and maybe you have lots of money or you, you are this person that you want to be and you realize it doesn't make you happy. It doesn't make you feel good. And some of you are going to be broke and you're going to realize that, it, money isn't that important to you anymore, right? Maybe success in life has changed. The word success has changed for you. And it really brought you this sense of kind of peace. Like, wow, like I didn't know that I could come to this realization of really what is important to me, what my values are, what do I want to do in life, right? Some of you got this opportunity with COVID that you – uh, we're able to, let's say, take some time and really think about it. You know, I asked my cousin this the other day, God, God love her soul. Um, you know, if you were retired and you had, you know, all the time and all the money in the world to do whatever you want, what would you do? What would you do? What would you do for fun? What would you do for joy? Who would you hang out with? And as my mother is, um, She's probably going to kill me for opening up on here, but I got to do it, Ma. Um, as she's suffering with cancer, uh, she's doing really well, by the way, and I will keep you all updated with that. Um, but it really rocked me, um, rocked me to my core uh, to think that we have such little time with people. And we hold on to grudges and we hold on to this unforgiveness and um, we hold such high expectations for other people. And when I realized that, you know, I really might lose my mom, whether it's now or it's not till 30 years from now, um, you know, am I okay with our relationship? Am I okay with me? Am I able to open up to her as me? Not who she expects me to be, not who I expect her to be. Um, how can I love and accept my mother for who she is, right? And without any expectations, right? A lot of you have had terrible childhoods, right? With, with parents who, uh, again, parents always do whatever they can, whatever they know. Um, so, it's hard for you who are listening, who have really suffered, um, to find that forgiveness from, let's say, um, a parent who is narcissistic or physically abusive or verbally abusive. And it's difficult to see that they were broken, right? And um, you're still hoping that this person will magically turn into the mother or father that you hope that they would be or that you see in them the potential that you see. Um, and what you have to learn is that that person or whoever I'm talking about, whatever resonates for you, um, it is not going to change. All right. And can you love that person with all their flaws? Can you forgive them for being broken? Right. And a lot of you are going to, excuse me, a lot of you are going to realize that, um, oh my gosh, there's so much happening. <laughs> I don't know how to make it. <laughs> okay. So we're just going to let that ring and I'm still going to talk. Um, a lot of you are going to realize that you've been holding this unforgiveness for years, right? And this insane expectation of someone else. And this might be your relationship. This could you be your family members, your brothers, your sisters, whoever. It doesn't matter. Just take what resonates with you. You're holding on to this. And do you know what is actually happening? Um, because you cannot accept and forgive a person for being them, you cannot fully accept and forgive yourself for being you. I'm going to say that again because it took me a while to, to really hear this. 
If you cannot accept another person for who they are, let go of the expectations of who you think they should be, right? Because you can't live in this fantasy world, which I did when I was married. I lived in a a fucking fantasy world that my husband was this wonderful person or he will turn into this wonderful person. And the truth was I could not see him for who he was, right? Um, Same with my parents, you know, and my, my relationships and friends, like see a person for who they are, not who you think they should be or who they might be or who they might become. Who are they now in this moment? And can you learn to forgive them for just being them, right? Let's say they were mean and they were rude. Okay, I'm going to use my ex as an example. Like he was not the best person, all right? And this has been almost a year to the day that I have left. And I forgive him. I do. I forgive him because he is so broken, all right? I can see Now, that when someone is so broken, they don't know how to open up. They don't know how to express themselves. They don't know how to love. They don't, they, they have high expectations for you. They expect the world from you. You know, they have this idea that you should be somebody else, right? Because they cannot accept themselves, right? They cannot look within and say, Hey, um, you know, something is, uh, oh, Something is wrong with me. Am I gone? Uh (laughs) Uh-oh. Something is wrong with me. Sorry, guys. Uh, And I need to fix myself and stop projecting my shit onto you, right? I hope I'm making sense in what I'm saying. And that in order for you to repair and to heal whatever needs to be healed, and only you will know what that is, Um, is that you will have to learn how to love and accept another human being with their baggage, right? Lower your expectations of people are not you, right? They're not you. They'll never be you. This is a hard lesson I've had to learn. My heart, the way I am with people, how I view the world is not how everybody else does. And I can't expect you or my family members or my relationships for those people to view the world the way that I do, to show up in the world the way that I do, as you can expect me to do the same or somebody else, right? And we can't expect people to be someone that they're not. Now, you can teach an old dog new tricks. People can heal. People can learn. Um, But what I've discovered is that they can only do that when you do that yourself. When you allow them this, this precious space, right, and just say, hey, Like you are who you are and I'm okay with that. I'm okay that you are that way because I'm learning to accept my flaws and who I am. And through that, I can embrace who you are with your flaws and, and, and your love and, and your heart and whoever you are as a person. Cause we're all just trying to do the best that we can. That's all we're doing. We all come to this life with only so many tools, um, so many, you know, uh, coping mechanisms, so many things. And because we only have so many tools, we can only show up at a certain level, right? Um, And a lot of people have really high expectations, right? My ex had extremely high expectations for me and I could never meet them. And a lot of people in my life have lots of high expectations of me, right? And I can't fucking meet them, guys. I can't be perfect, right? And I think that's what I'm learning most is that I can't be a perfect person, right? You can't be a perfect person. It doesn't exist. I can't be the perfect person for every single person in my life, right? I can't be the perfect daughter. I can't be the perfect wife. I can't be the perfect best friend. I can't be the perfect coach. I can't be the perfect radio show host. Like, It's just not possible. The only thing I can do is to be me, right? And uh, Jenny over here is saying expectations kill relationships, still working on it. Yes, that is the truth of it. It does kill relationships. 
Mostly, it kills a relationship with yourself because when we have high expectations of other people, it means we have insanely high expectations for ourselves. I mean, the the insane expectation, meaning you are trying to be perfect, right? So this completely resonates with what I'm talking about. Uh, thank you, Jenny, for that is that you are in your head and you are trying to be this perfect person. And this perfect person doesn't exist. And you need to let go of this expectation of yourself that you need to be perfect or uh, that you have to be perfect, right? Because it's not there. You th That is just impossible. And when I, I, I'll teach you all my techniques, right? This is 100% free. I'm, I'm tired of charging for what I know, okay? I will teach you my techniques. So I'm tapping in the car about two weeks ago and I was like, I just have to forgive myself. I, I have to stop trying to be a perfect person, right? And to be perfect for everybody. And you who are listening, when you have high expectations of other people, always remember that your expectation of yourself is even more insane and it's super detrimental to your mental health because you're trying to reach something that is unreachable, right? It's, it's, it, it's not there. So learn to lower those expectations of yourself and laugh at yourself like, God, like, you know, you got a lot of skeletons in your closet. You know, you got a lot of dark to you. You got a lot of dark sides. Like, that's okay. It's okay that you have flaws, right? I give this example all the time with my moms is that, you know, when we have kids, right? Excuse me, we, we all kind of sort of have expectations for our children. But what, what you don't realize that you're doing, I mean, if you don't have kids, you will learn one day uh, that we lower our expectations of our kids, right? Because they can't be a a, a teenager at two years old, they they cannot sit still, right, at a table and to expect a two-year-old to sit from, hey, Jess, um, to sit and really, like, um, pay attention at two years old, you're expecting the thought process of a teenager. Like, you, you can't expect that, right? And I noticed that, you know, with my family members and with my son, who's five now, that we all have insane expectations for everybody, especially children, and it's silly. Uh, so what motherhood and parenthood teach you, and, and hopefully what I can bring to you is that, you know, we can't expect people to be someone that they're not, especially ourselves. And what we really have to do is come back and ask ourselves, who are we, right? And you might have to sit there for 30 years in a cave. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I think I've watched too much Kung Fu Panda. But Kung Fu Panda, if you haven't watched it, go watch it. I'll watch all three because they really get into this idea that, you know, you really have to find this inner peace, right? And, and a lot of you are going to be like, inner peace, and y'all like, well, what the hell? There's no such thing. Inner peace comes from fully accepting who you are and owning that and discovering who you are. Because I just told somebody before that there is a constant cycle and of death and rebirth of your soul, right? Because it's a constant, your whole life is designed to be set up so that you come home to you, that you start doing things that feel good. Like right now, what I'm doing, whoever I'm talking to, this feels good for me. If I can wake up every day and be excited to talk to whomever is on here, hey Lisa, talk to anyone who's on here and, and change a part of their life or inspire them to make a change or just bring hope. Like that's what I want to do. That's what feels good for me. And every day that I get closer to what feels good for me and do what feels good for me, the more the universe starts bringing things in, right? Life becomes more magical. And, and I say that because I can feel it in my, in my body, right? Even through despair, even through your hardest times, life can still be full of love and joy and fun. And it's time that you start listening to yourself, who you are deep within your soul. If you are unhappy, ask yourself, why are you unhappy? Are you in a toxic relationship like I was, right? 
were you are you not getting what you need are you not feeling supported are you do you hate your job do you dread going into work every day do you dread the friends you have the people you talk to maybe certain family members like why are you unhappy why do you feel anxious ask yourself right if you can't open up to yourself there's no way you can open up and be yourself with anybody else. Okay, I went as far as now I talk to myself all the time as if I am like my soulmate, right? Like my future soulmate, like the, the person that I want in my life or, and I became the person I want to be loved by. And that is huge because that, that, oh God, I'm getting emotional. That, um, that power that I just gave to myself was that, I don't need anybody to approve of me anymore, right? I've never been able to say that. I, I've never been able to be okay with being me and, and sharing who I am with you guys, whether it's taboo or not, um, and showing up and telling you that I have some special you know, weird gift that I don't even know what it is to help you, but that's what I'm doing because that's what feels right for me. And it took me hours of talking to myself and being honest about how I felt about my job, how I feel about my mom, my family, my son, my ex, um, my life. You know, how do I feel? So if you get anything from today, it's coming back to yourself and saying, hey, how do I really feel? Why do I feel this way? talking to yourself about your fears like do you feel or fear getting hurt do you fear rejection do you fear abandonment do you fear um judgment right i feared <laughs> that my husband was going to leave me one day right so much so that i stayed for 12 years 12 years 12 years right the fear, and, and if you fear that someone's going to leave you, please know that is not love, okay? Um, and we will get into this as time goes on. I will talk, you, talk to you about toxic relationships and codependency and things like that. But that fear that somebody was going to leave me, that something I did that I did or I talked about was going to rock our relationship or have him leave me. Uh, was devastating. And that fear of abandonment kept me from being me from showing up in the world, right? From showing up in my relationships, for being honest with myself, right? And guess what happens? He didn't abandon me, I left him. Uh, and with that came an insane, an insane empowerment lesson that whatever you fear, you can get through. I have a lot of moms who fear their husbands leaving, fear their babies disappearing or getting sick or dying or things like that, uh, fear of not going back to work, fear of losing their job, fear of this. Whatever you're fearing right now, I promise you, you will get through it. You will get through it because if I can get through all these fucking crazy shit in my life, you sure as hell can. You don't think that you are strong enough, but I'm going to tell you, as I channel right now to you, you are way fucking stronger than you could ever possibly imagine. If you fear losing your job and you lose it, know that you lost your job for a specific reason. A specific reason. And it could just be to show you that you are fully capable of figuring out on your own and that you can get through it. And or it could be that you have now discovered that you have an awesome passion, that you can finally go and do whatever. When something bad happens to you, you always want to ask yourself a couple different questions, but what can I do now? What can I do now that this terrible thing happened? <laughs> I know it sounds crazy, but it's the truth. What can I do now? Because every terrible thing happens. Uh, it ignites a part of you and your soul that allows you to move forward, right? So some of you are going to have terrible things happen to you. And they forced you to find a hidden talent, right? To 
to not be afraid anymore, right? To go with the flow of life, right? To have more fun, to find more joy, to to be with your family uh, or to travel the world or whatever it is. Though, think of, go back today and find some time. Think about all of the terrible thing that, things that's ever happened to you in your life. And what did that teach you about who you are and what's important in life? What did that experience allow you to do? Did it allow you to connect with old friends? Did it allow you to find new love? Did it allow you to mend broken relationships? Did it allow you to forgive other people and forgive yourself for whatever you think you did wrong? What did it allow you to do that you weren't able to do before? Focus on that. And then whatever you're fearing right now, whatever this fear, because a lot of you have lots of fears. I have lots of fears too, but this is intense right now. Who's ever feeling this extreme fear? (laughs) Face it. Face it. Experience it. I had to do this with my mother. The fear of her dying was so intense, right? So I literally had to put myself in the position of when she, if and when she passes, hopefully won't be for another 40 years. But I had to say, this is the fear I have and I need to feel it. I need to to cry. I need to feel what it's going to feel like if that were to happen. What, what am I gonna feel like? How am I gonna feel? What are the thoughts that are gonna run through my head? And I truly experienced it as if it was a loss, right? As if I was going through the loss. And thank God I'm not. My mother is very much alive in here. Um, but I had to. And then I had to ask myself, okay, what am I learning about this experience? What is it teaching me about the my relationship with my mom, the relationship to myself and to other people? What can I learn from this experience? And what I, I came to find is kind of, let's recap from the beginning, is that... <clears throat> I need to accept my mother for who she is, right? And she loves me very dearly, and I love her very dearly. We don't see eye to eye on a lot of things, but I have to be okay with that, right? And she may not accept that I'm this weird, witchy kind of person, and that's okay, and I'm okay with that. What really matters is that I spend whatever time I have with my mom loving her for just being her, not expecting her to change, not expecting her to be somebody she's not, to really love her for who she is, love my father and my brother and my friends for who they are, not who I think they should be. Um, and, And really spending that time to be like, yeah, we are different and we aren't perfect and we are different souls, but we are here to be with each other in this space and time and to love and honor each other with whatever time that we have together. And so as I talk about this, and I feel with you guys through this, spend some time facing your fears, asking yourself, what do you need? How can you heal? How can you start accepting yourself and others for just being who you are? Because who you are is wonderful person. And when you let other, when you let yourself in, right? We talk about loving other people and allowing them into our heart. Allow your own self into your heart. Allow yourself to fully experience love for yourself, that you are weird, that you are strange. You know, you do weird shit. You might be anxious. You might be fearful. You might have idiosyncrasies and you're a little crazy and like, you know, whatever. Or you're like me and you read tarot and you like, you know, witch movies and shit. I don't know. But whatever you do that you don't want to show people, show yourself and be like, yeah, own that shit. Like I am fucking weird. I'm strange, you know, I like weird stuff. I have weird fantasies. I got weird shit, like whatever, you know, like 
Tell yourself it's okay that you are this way. You can't change who you are. And you and as some of you are watching, you're going to be laughing because you know who you are. You've known since you were a child. You're strange. Stop trying to impress people by being someone you're not. And it starts with going inside and accepting that this is who you are, a weird fucking corky soul, and that's fucking okay. <laughs> You're strange. Who gives a shit? It makes you uniquely you to be strange and weird, right? And that is beautiful. And when you can do that for yourself and be like, yes, I'm weird. <laughs> I feel strange and anxious and I'm crazy. Then you can open up to other people and be like, this is me. Take it or leave it. And if you don't like it, that's okay because I'm not trying to impress you anymore. I'm not, right? I'm trying to be me because you're tired of lying to yourself. You're trying to, tired of being someone you're not. You're tired of trying to fit into society that you, what's that saying? You were born to stand out. Like all of us were born to stand out. All of you have some sort of magical abilities and psychic abilities. Everybody, we're all born with this. We're born to stand out and be uniquely us. You're tired of fitting in, right? Or trying to fit in when you know that you don't belong with the way society is running. Maybe you have ideas of how to shake things up in the world. Maybe you have ideas of how you could do something that is too, totally taboo. Go and do them. Go and be who you are. Show the fucking world who you are. Mostly show yourself what you are truly capable. Be honest with yourself. You don't want to be like everybody else. You shouldn't want to be like everybody else, right? Because everybody is miserable. Do you want to be miserable? I don't. I don't want to be miserable. One thing I, I learned, uh, many things I've fucking learned, but... Trying to fit in and be a mold, right? I, I was a mold for my ex, right? I, I allowed myself to conform to the perfect person for him, right? Which ne would never became the perfect person for him. But I conformed so much, right? This code, we're talking about codependency here. So <laughs> you might all have some of that. If you are trying to conform yourself so that somebody else could like you, that society could like you, that your job could like you, you will be miserable forever. <laughs> Thank you. You will. You will. Thank you. I love you too. You will be miserable. All right. Stop conforming. Stop trying to be someone you're not. I've been miserable a long time, right? I always, I'm optimistic to a fault, guys. You will see. <laughs> but that is good because being, for me, being optimist shows me that that is constantly me, right? And anything else I've done that was to try to fit a mold of people, try to make people like me, try to make people think I'm this perfect person, right? And some of you don't even know you're doing this, right? A lot, I did this subconsciously. I had no idea this is what I was doing until I sat with myself and asked myself, you know, why am I such a people pleaser? Why do I always like not voice my opinion? Why do I pretend to be somebody I'm not or show up in a space um, where I'm trying so hard to fit in when I wasn't born to do that? I wasn't. I was born to rock the ship, be a little fucking rebel. Like some of you are that way and you're the black sheep of the fucking family or whatever. You're doing shit that nobody else is doing. Like that's what you're supposed to fucking do. Rock the goddamn ship. Okay. Don't let anybody else tell you otherwise. Stop trying to fucking fit in with people that you don't even fucking like. Right. Or people who won't ever accept you for who you are. Let them go. Let them go. If somebody doesn't like you for you and all your weirdness, then they don't deserve to be in your life. They don't. They don't. They don't deserve you. You deserve all the love all the affection, all, all the romance in your life, all the magic. And the only way that you're going to be able to tap into that is to be who you are. Accept yourself for who you are and show up. Show up. Do that crazy shit. Say that crazy thing. You know, when we're in relationships with people, you know, when you, uh, 
either start a new relationship or you have a relationship with somebody and there's a lot of untold things, right? Unsaid things, things you want to say, um, things that are loving that you want to say and things that are hurtful that you want to say, right? Because we, we all have that, right? <laughs> Not everything's all rainbows and butterflies. That's for damn fucking sure. But we don't say things. I want you to ask yourself why you have a filter with certain people, right? Obviously, we have filter in the world because we can't just say whatever the fuck we want. But I'm going to start saying whatever the fuck I want. <laughs> anyway, uh, ask yourself why you hold back when you speak. Why aren't you telling that person something you want to tell them? Good or bad or indifferent? What are you afraid of? They might reject you. They might not love you. They might not think that you're coming from a place of respect. I, I don't know. What are you not saying that you need to be saying? Okay, ask yourself why you filter what you say. Are you filtering things that you say to others so that they feel okay? And then you're denying how you feel, right? With my um, ex, right, and a lot of my relationships anyway, I filter a shit ton of what I say, okay? Part, one of my gifts is that as you're talking to me, I can hear ev other things. Um, so meaning I, I can read between the lines, energetically speaking, I guess. So I pick up on everything that's not being said. Um, so... It's sort of like a curse, I guess. <laughs> because if I come out and tell you I know what you're thinking and that you're not actually telling me the truth, you're going to like freak the fuck out, right? So that's why I filter a lot of things. But I also filter a lot of things because I don't know how somebody else is going to react. My energy is extremely intense, right? You guys can feel it coming off the thing. Some of you are getting on, coming back on, like, like, fuck, this girl's energy is like so intense. I don't know what to do. You're speaking to my soul. Stop this. <laughs> okay. Now imagine if I was in a relationship with you or you were my best friend or you're across the street or whatever, like it's, it's penetrating, right? And it's scary. So whatever I say scares people. So I tend to filter how I am as to not make somebody feel uncomfortable. Uh, as to not make somebody mad at me, right, or hate me. Uh, and that's really detrimental. So a lot of you are are filtering your stuff because you, you don't want people not to like you, right, uh, or you don't want to rock the boat. But you need to start saying things. You need to start being open with other people, right? This radio show is going to be more of, Finding your soul, right? Finding your heart, letting it sing, right? Letting it come out so you can feel the magic. Start saying things to people, like re lovingly. When you express what's in your brain, stop worrying about what the other person's going to think because you're really hurting yourself, right? Of course, there's situations where you need a filter, right? Of course, we need filters. But uh, with the ones that you love, stop filtering things. Stop filtering them. Just be you. If you're mad about something, talk about it. But you could talk like this. You don't have to be screaming. Granted, I'm, you know, I used to be a yeller, but you can talk calmly about things. You can find a way to approach a situation and speak how you really feel, right? People like that. They don't know they like that, but they love that. They love when you're lovingly honest, right? If you, let's say you have different political views or different religious views with somebody in your family and somebody on here has that and you guys are constantly banging heads, have an open conversation about that with somebody and be like, listen, if we talk about these things, right, that they're taboo, maybe you have different belief systems. Is there a way that we can lovingly talk about this, right? Without trying to change the other person's opinion. You just want to have a nice conversation about this. You don't have to yell. You don't have to scream. And your job, when you're talking about things that are important to you, you're not trying to change the other person, right? That's what we always have to be aware of is we're not trying to change someone's beliefs or how they feel about a situation. We just want a space to openly connect with others, right? To open our heart and be like, hey, this is how I'm feeling today. This is, um, you know, what I want to do. Uh, this is how I feel about you. This is 
uh, how I feel about the situation. People love that. And then be like, well, how do you feel about this? Like, do you feel like we're on the same page? Do you feel like our belief systems are matched? How do you feel? Open up the lines of communication, right? Uh, energetically speaking, when you drop your guard a little bit and you start expressing how you feel openly and honestly, you will create an energetic exchange with this other person. Sometimes you're going to have to put up a little bit of an energetic wall in case the person's not on your same level, but you will open up this even exchange and you're going to feel it, right? As I'm speaking to you, you feel this energetic exchange, whether you're aware of it or, or not, right? And it's coming as like, oh my gosh, this person really understands me, knows what I'm going through, right? Is willing and open and honest, right? I have an, a, an insane gift and curse that allows people at the grocery store to tell me their whole life story in two seconds, okay? I don't know how many of you have that, but I have that. So my energy allows you space to be who you are, right? whoever's listening. So when you come in and you watch these and you come to me and you ask me and you tell me, you will, you won't even know you're doing it, but you will just automatically feel comfortable to be like, this is what's happening in my life and I don't know what to do. I love that that is me. I love that you come to me and you ask me or you tell me your life story, right? So my energy allows you comfort, right? It allows you to feel safe, because you are safe, because I'm not going to judge you at all. I've been through crazy fucking shit, right? And whatever's going on in your life is happening for a reason. So I'm not here to judge you. I'm here to help you so that you can hear your soul, right? And that's what happens when you start doing this with yourself first and then other people. You will feel more comfortable going to yourself, right? Your intuition, we're going to talk a lot about this. Going to yourself and asking yourself, how do I feel? What do I feel like? Being open and honest. So you have an even exchange within yourself, right? About how you're feeling. Answer yourself. Go back and forth. What is this really about? What am I really feeling? What is this? And answer yourself as like, the, you know, when you see these soulmates on TV and you're like, oh God, I wish this person would just say this wonderful thing to me or your mom and you wish your mom would say this wonderful thing to you or whatever. Start saying that shit to yourself. Start saying it to yourself. Start talking to yourself as if you were in this perfect relationship or you have this a uh, perfect parent or perfect kid or whatever. Parent yourself. Talk to yourself so that as you build this even exchange of energy within yourself, you can now become more open and honest with others. You can feel the even exchange for others. You can feel something happening where you now feel comfortable being you. Okay? So... Thank you, beautiful souls, for being on. For those of you who watch the short or the long, doesn't matter. So I'm going to, again, be here every day at 10 o'clock. I'm mostly going to start trying to stream on YouTube and Twitch, um, but I don't have the setup. I don't have the Ethernet cord and all this stuff. I, I have not done a live radio show, but it's going to be something like this, okay? Um, as I move through this, as the universe moves through me to do this, um, I hope that you share. Okay, I hope that you share your stories with me so that I can help you because this is what I'm doing, right? Uh, let me be your guide, your being of hope. Whatever you need right now in your life, allow me to do that for you. Show up, whether it's for two minutes or for the whole hour, right? Show up for that because this is healing for you. So this is your healing time. This is your time to allow your soul to speak to you. That is really what this is. Um, that's the only I will come up with a name and whatever tagline that, you know, we do, but I'm doing this for me um, because I have gifts and talents that need to be shared with more than just my group of moms that I was serving. Um, it, it needs for the masses for whatever reason. I don't know what that is, but I'll have to figure it out. But anyway, uh, so hopefully it will be on YouTube. I'll set a link um, so that it will be live streamed. I'm just having some issues with that. So bear with me as I get this started. Um, I will do this every day at 10 o'clock. If I get a job, if uh, unless this all of a sudden starts making money, <laughs> <laughs> and then I don't have to get a job. Uh, if I do get a job, I'm going to continue to do this because this feels really good for me. And I can tell that the ones that have listened have gotten something out of this. So this is what lights me up. This is what brings me home. So join me every day at 10 o'clock, at least this week um, and into next week. And I'll be here to just warm your soul. 
give you a little bit of light, a little hope and little healing um, because you deserve it. You deserve it. And um, I just love you all so much. Thank you, Denise. I love you too. Um, and I uh, will be here tomorrow for you. So sending you all so much light and love as always. And may the universe bring you many, many blessings today because we are in Pisces season and this is a season of magic. So for those of you who don't believe, you're about to start believing um, in a little bit of magic and in the universe, source, God, goddess, whatever you want to call it, um, it's coming in. There's a whole lot of blessings for a whole lot of you and um, enjoy them. Be grateful for what you have so that more things can start coming through. So many blessings today. Love you all. Till next time. I don't know how to end this up here. <laughs>